Hi, John Copeland here, and we're back at Fox Valley Cart for another of our Grand Prix seminar videos. In the last video, we took a look at the basic setup and adjustments on a typical cart. But there's a lot more to know about how to get the very best performance out of your cart. Weight distribution, torsion bars, and axle stiffness can make a critical difference in how the cart behaves. Getting the proper weight distribution plays a big part in whether the cart oversteers or understeers. Too much front weight can make the cart loosen back, while too much rear weight bias makes it hard to turn into a corner. Without enough front weight, the cart pushes. Like so many other factors dealing with the chassis, checking and adjusting the weight distribution in the cart must be done with the driver in the seat. The driver is the single heaviest component of the cart on the track and driver position makes a huge impact on weight distribution. We can scale the cart for you here at the shop or if you have a level place to use you can buy four bathroom scales and check it yourself. The recommended weight distribution is 41 to 43 percent front and 59 to 57 percent rear. The front weight should not vary by more than five pounds side to side. More than that indicates that the frame may be twisted. Rear weight should be within 10 pounds side to side if possible. The weight of the engine on the right side of the cart makes that a little tougher, but you may be able to scoot the seat over to help balance things out. As we said, the driver is the single heaviest component on the cart, so it follows that seat positioning is the most effective way to adjust weight distribution. The driver needs to be comfortable with good control over the steering and the pedals, but you need to be mindful of where the weight is. Moving the seat forward or sitting it more upright, both move weight forward. This, of course, increases front grip and reduces rear grip. Moving the seat back, weight to the rear, has predictable results. If you have the weight distribution where it should be and you still need more grip, you can add additional seat struts from the seat down to the bearing carrier on the chassis. Typically, Grand Prix carts suffer from too much rear grip, not too little, so it's unlikely that you'll need additional struts. Proper weight distribution is tedious to get right, but it's worth it. Many of your carts will either have an additional bar in front or will have provisions to install one. This is called a torsion bar and it can make a big difference in how well the front end of the car works. Adding a torsion bar stiffens the front end of the cart and makes the steering more responsive. If the front end is already turning in properly, adding a torsion bar may just make it twitchy or harder to drive smoothly. In any case, if you have a torsion bar, it's worth doing the experiment to see if the cart is faster with it installed or with it removed. Whether your cart has a 40 millimeter axle or a 50 millimeter axle, the stiffness of the axle can help you tune the chassis to give you the desired rear grip without slowing the cart down. Axles come in a variety of stiffnesses and that stiffness has an effect on how much grip gets to the outside rear tire. When you put the rear hub on, it's a good idea to put a locking collar behind it and tighten it down so the hub can't move. When you turn the steering wheel and the front end transfers pressure to the rear, the more the axle can flex and absorb some of that pressure, the less force pushes the tire down onto the track. If you need to get more grip in back, a stiffer axle will deliver that. But as I said before, typically Grand Prix carts struggle with too much rear grip so a soft axle is generally the right call. Axles are graded hard, medium, and soft, and they're marked on one end of the axle near the place for the key. Hard axles may be marked C or H, mediums are marked B or M, and soft axles are marked A or S. It's important to understand a hard axle is not any more durable than a soft axle. If you get hit on the track and bend a soft axle, that same hit would have bent a medium or a hard axle just as easily. You need to know which axle you have, diameter and stiffness, so that you know what to get if you need one. One more thing about axles. It doesn't take very much of a bend 
in an axle to make the car difficult to drive and uncompetitive. If you're not sure if your axle is straight enough, just slip it out, bring it into the shop, and we'll put it between centers and check it and let you know if it's okay to run. Of all the adjustable elements on your cart, the rear track width, the overall width from the center line of one tire in the rear to the center line of the other has the most dramatic effect on how the cart behaves. You remember from the last video that we said the best starting place was two inches narrower than the Grand Prix maximum of 55 inches. Now that's measured from the outside of the rear tire to the outside of the other rear tire. We suggested that you start with the rear two inches narrower than the rules allow. And here's why. We want you to be able to adjust the rear track width as track conditions change. So what exactly does changing the rear track width do? It may seem counterintuitive, but making the rear track width wider actually gives you less grip, while making it narrower increases the grip. And here's why. This is looking at the cart from the rear. This is the outside rear tire, and here is the center of the contact patch. This is the center of mass on the cart, typically somewhere around the bottom of the driver's breastbone. The force that the center of mass exerts on the contact patch is shown as the diagonal arrow. It has two components, the vertical component and the horizontal component. If you move the rear tire in closer to the center line of the cart, assuming that the mass doesn't change, the percentage of that mass pushing vertically down on the tire increases. Conversely, moving the tire out as, the long, as long as the mass remains the same decreases the percentage of mass pushing down and increases the percentage pushing the tire horizontally. So making the rear of the cart narrower generates more grip and making it wider makes less grip and more slide. Your cart is very sensitive to this adjustment and making adjustments as little as a half an inch in the track width makes a huge difference in how the car performs. So why would you want to start the rear wheels two inches narrower than the Grand Prix maximum? That's because when you first start practice, the track will be cold, dirty, and not have any rubber built up on it. You'll need the extra grip. As practice continues and grip begins to improve, you'll want to have room to adjust to move the hubs to control how much grip you have. You might ask, don't you want all the grip you can get so you can go faster? Not really. Too much grip slows you down and the roll cage compounds the problem because the roll cage raises the center of mass. The higher center of mass from the Grand Prix rules makes the cart think you're running it narrower than it wants to be. You get too much grip and the cart hops or bounces in the turns. This really kills your speed and makes the cart very uncomfortable and difficult to drive. The roll cage, regardless of how it's mounted, by raising the center of mass, makes everything harder. As the track warms up and starts to get rubber on it, the grip will improve and you'll need to move the rear hubs out to keep the cart from bouncing. In fact, if you go back over all the things we talked about that help reduce rear grip, you may need, need to use more than one of those adjustments to keep your cart handling well. Reducing caster, reducing toe in, or increasing toe out, or adding a front torsion bar. All these, together with widening the rear end, will help you deal with too much grip. One more thing. Some of you may have rear hubs that have a stop built into them that hits the end of the axle and prevents the hubs from moving on the axle. In that case, you can always have us But in any case, you need to be able to move the hubs to take advantage of that tuning tool. Lastly, I want to take a minute and talk about chain alignment and tension. 
it's critical to get the sprocket on the axle exactly lined up with the sprocket on the clutch. Even being a little bit off will eat up the chain and the sprocket and the clutch sprocket or all of those. So take the time to get it perfectly aligned. But lining up the sprocket won't do you any good if the axle can move from side to side. You should be using locking collars on each side of the axle to prevent the axle from sliding side to side. You can put the axle collars either on the inside of both bearings or on the outside of both bearings, wherever you have room. You can't depend on the set screws in the bearing to hold the axle. They're intended to keep the axle from moving inside the bearing, but they cannot manage the tremendous side force that the axle puts on during cornering. It's important not to get the chain too tight. It's hard on the chain, the clutch sprocket, and the bearings. Ideally, you should have, on an engine-mounted clutch, about an inch of slack from all the way up to all the way down at the tightest point. I know that seems like a lot, but if you have the sprockets properly lined up and the axle positioned with lock collars so it can't shift, you won't have any trouble with the chain coming off. You can have a little less with a jack shaft mounted clutch, but no less than three quarters of an inch at the tightest point. By the way, an easy indicator that you might have a bent axle is if when you roll the axle over, the chain gets loose, then tight, then loose again. If you see that, it's time to check the axle. One last thing for you crew chiefs out there. Some of these adjustments may make the cart more demanding to drive. Drivers typically want all the things that make the cart easier to drive. Softer tires, more teeth on the axle, more grip. But the things that make the cart faster are harder tires, fewer teeth, and less grip. Your job as the crew chief is not to give the driver the cart that they want. It's to give the driver the cart that's fast. It's the driver's job to drive what you give them. So experiment, test different setups, keep good records so you'll know what works and what doesn't. Remember, we're here to help. If you have questions or need more information, just call or stop in. Next time we'll hit the track and talk about driving the Grand Prix track. We'll talk about cornering and braking theory and how to use those to go faster at the Grand Prix. We'll use track diagrams and on-track video to help you get ready to hit the track for practice. As always, don't forget to send us your comments and questions and to share these videos with your Grand Prix friends. If you have any suggestions about how, to, how we can make these videos better or more useful, please let us know. See you next time.